Assessment, I think, is not only the alpha and omega of teaching. It is its A to Z. In other words, it should happen before, during, and after the teaching and learning process. As a young body teacher, what I appreciate most about working at Christine is that TNL here is designed exactly the way it is supposed to be. At the onset of teaching, we have the CAT4 that provides us a clear picture of the student's strengths and weaknesses. The CAT4, on the other hand, gives me an idea of how to help them. I am able to plan targeted activities for mixed ability groups wherein students will utilize their strengths and collaborate with each other, like for example in learning angles. The potential of the students and their learning preferences. Once their data is well interpreted, it's checked and then use it to instruct teaching and learning in the classroom. Learners can also assess themselves and others in the class. By providing success criteria, I ask my class to mark their work or that of others. These sort of opportunities encourage learners to discuss things they found hard, as well as the opportunity to see other examples of good work. Okay, uh, I'm using this chat for, I'll tell you for three important reasons. One is to baseline new students. Two is to spot underachievement. Three is to identify both gifted and talented and also uh, special needs students. This shows us what our students of determination know and what they are able to do. Given that, I will be able to have a chance to gauge whether I will continue the topic or further elaborate on it or start a new one. It will also give me a chance to modify my methodology and also my plan. Assessment data allows the center department to set realistic goals that can be worked on in class as well as one-on-one. -on -one. These goals address the specific barriers that the student has towards learning. Plan is unique. There are no two students in the school that the same. They might show similarities in their cognitive ability or learning style. It is only when we know the needs of each child that we can properly teach the child. That is right. That is why we say that data by itself does not fully provide a solution to teaching and learning. However, data gives us information that we can use to modify our lesson plans, to modify teaching and learning for continuous improvement. Dear colleagues, it is important we understand the use of data in teaching and learning. Some of these documentations include providing the students with well-tailored tasks and instructions that are age appropriate, but also in line with their abilities and skills. Formative assessments in reading focus on how well students are applying their phonological skills. Comprehension is the critical outcome in reading development. This is what enables students to understand content and become proficient readers and digest subject area knowledge in science, humanities, and even reading. Monitoring students' progress over time is imperative to be able to impact my instructions and students' learning. It is a cyclical process. Through consistent assessment, I can make informed decisions about what instruction is appropriate for each student. When teachers join forces with their students in the formative assessment process, their partnership generates powerful learning outcomes. Where he or she needs strengthening and uh, intervention. Uh, furthermore, we have CAT4 and other diagnostic tests which gives us a wider image of the students' abilities and strengths. Uh, from a mathematical point of view, it uh, tells us whether the child is a special. Those who are specially uh, able, we also give them work like uh, mind maps and drawings, uh, which help them to relate with science as a beacon of light to understand a student's better. Assessment can be used as uh, facilitating learning for students, way of reporting students' progress and also a way of making decisions about teaching. We use this data in planning every lesson. And in every step of the way, we ensure that assessment for learning happens through generating tangible evidences of learning. May it be verbal responses or written works or group presentations. 
But what I like most about our practice is, is that even end-of-term assessments are not really considered the end. We reflect upon them and use them to plan on how to move our students' learning further. 